Get behind me, British man. I'm gonna defend you from strangers on the internet. Jacob. 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 What's up, everybody? My name is Jacob Collier. He started by making covers in his bedroom, and now he's got cosigns from legendary artists, a growing collection of Grammys, and a passionate fan base. Jacob has truly made a name for himself, which is wild because he already had one. He didn't need to make another name. Stop me if you've heard this one before. I think Jacob Collier is a prodigiously talented musician, but I don't always click with his music as much as I'd like to. Yeah. At no point have I ever been some overzealous fan of Jacob's musical output, even though I think that he is immensely talented and he strikes me as a pretty nice and chill dude. But recently, he put out the fourth and final installment of his Jesse series, and the discourse surrounding him has felt... different. Mathematical AJR, both gay. This theater kid Nickelodeon crap can't go away fast enough. Horrible. <laughs> This guy has never made a song anyone actually likes listening to. You suck at music, Jacob Collier. Please get better. Thank you in advance. Good one, a wild parrot 719. How'd they manage to pack so much cringe into this album? Kinda impressive. No one can touch Drake. That bland voice, that soulless try-hard quirkiness, those repugnant crocs, whose you should only be allowed to hospital professionals. And he could play 30 instruments, but if the ideas behind them are as old as his dad and stale as F, then the perfect storm of cringe takes place. Monkey. Oh, okay. Come with me, friends, as I now defend Jacob Collier. Let's first lay out what I think are core truths, common ground about Jacob that we can all bond over. One, Jacob Collier is a technically gifted musician. Even if you don't like the execution, you've got to pay respects to the mechanics behind it. That's been the case ever since he broke out on YouTube with covers of the Flintstones theme or Isn't She Lovely. Dude knows his stuff. Two, Jacob Collier is an eloquent speaker about music and the creative process. Jacob's been doing the press rounds for Jesse Volume 4 recently, including an interview with creator economy figures Colin and Samir. It is two and a half hours long. Some of you will think that's too long. Some of you will think those are rookie numbers. I believe anyone who likes or dislikes Jacob should watch this interview. I think it's valuable to hear other people speak on their creative process, even if, and especially if, we don't care for the finished product. Again, even if you don't care for the execution, the vision is still there and Jacob speaks well on it. Great art is when you walk down the mountain from the, cold, the chilly cold lack of oxygen to the warmth of the village and you exchange stories and food and energy and you meet people and you meet people where they are and you say, this is for you. You can make totally pure art any way you want including reaching a ton of people for that purpose. It's okay to be ambitious. It's okay to want to reach people and move people. Three, Jacob Collier usually sounds great on other people's songs. Have you heard SZA's Good Days? The way he's like, That's delicious. Or Lizzie McAlpine's Erase Me. Or a good chunk of Stormzy's latest record. Or parts of Coldplay's Music of the Spheres, which might not sound like an endorsement, but some of that record is solid. Don't make me get out the business card again. He's like the inverse of Kevin Parker, who makes excellent music as Tame Impala, to the point where you say he should be producing for pop stars. And then he does, and you're like, oh. But it's one thing to lay out facts about a person or thing, and another to see them manifest out in the real world. You see, there's this thing that happens when a person or thing becomes popular where they get boiled down to one element or one personality trait. Jacob Collier is the music theory guy. There have been multiple instances where a media outlet will get him to explain Sir Duke or teach harmony to people or answer music questions on Twitter. On one hand, Jacob seems to lean into this persona, I imagine because he is enthusiastic and knowledgeable about music theory. On the other hand, media outlets seem to find value in bringing him on for... And on the third hand you have, people tend to like explanations about music, why certain chords or melodies impact them, why they like the music they like. So it's all three of these things that have led Jacob to be pigeonholed. Beyond just waxing poetic about Dami Sevs on the internet, Jacob has also released music. As of now, he's got five records under his belt. The first was In My Room, mostly an extension of the bedroom videos that made him famous. But then we got the four Jesse records, starting in December 
2018. Each record represents a different part of the day, and in tandem, a different sonic palette. Volume 1 represents Daybreak, and it's a collaborative album with Metropole Orkfest. Volume 2 is Afternoon Folk Music. Volume 3 is Nighttime R&B. And Volume 4 is, according to Jacob, is a sort of culmination of all these different forces. In practice, it's the poppiest album of the quad. I've followed along with these records as they've come out, and they're fine. I don't love them, but I respect them and their maker. Back when I did album reviews, I covered Jesse Volume 2 and did a mediocre skit where I pretended I wasn't jealous of his skill. And when I did a big Grammys video in 2021, I talked about Jesse Volume 3 and how I wouldn't have nominated it for Album of the Year if I was the sole person running the Recording Academy. For Volumes 1 through 3, the discourse has basically stayed the same. The people who liked the record liked it, and the people who didn't moved on after maybe a bit of venting on the internet. I should also say that I'm not here to defend Volume 4 specifically. For me personally, Volume 4 is in line with the past three volumes, in that I enjoy some songs wholeheartedly, like Bridge Over Troubled Water, I respect some parts, like the vocal build in the middle of Well, and I don't care for a handful of parts, like when Jacob raps on Over You. And just to be crystal clear, if you don't care for Jacob's music, that's fine. You're not the reason I'm here talking about him today. I'm here today because with Jesse Volume 4, the discourse has become way more toxic. Why that is, I'm not super sure. It might be that Volume 4 leans the most into pop music, which means it's operating in a genre with a lot of eyeballs on it. It could also be part of the reaction to Volume 3 and that getting nominated for Album of the Year at the Grammys, since that has been the first major point of backlash for Jacob thus far. Whatever the reason is for the toxicity, we're here now, so let's run through some of the reasons why people don't like Jacob or his music. Jacob's music is often very busy and chaotic, and doesn't give ideas space to breathe. This first one is the biggest complaint I see towards Jacob's music, and it's not unfair. A lot of Jacob's songs can be out here doing a lot. He's living proof that you actually can put whatever you want into your art. But allow me to revisit my point about diving into the processes of musicians, because Jacob himself has stated that this is a big component of his musical style. I find myself having ideas always perpetually on the edge of something I know or understand. And I've always had this since I was, you know, seven, right. eight, nine years old with my little Casio keyboard making samplers. And I think I committed myself to the discovery and exploration of the edge the whole way through my life. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still there. Oh, actually I haven't mic'd the snare in the right way. Now, does that mean you must then like his music? No, you can still not care for the execution. But the extraness that Jacob employs in the music is intentional. Is the extraness in Jacob's music necessary? I reject that question. Art is incredible, and it's important, and the world is much better with it, but it is not necessary to us as humans. You want to know what it is? There are five things. Food, water, oxygen, sleep, shelter. Everything else is a bonus. Jacob's music is not essential to any of us, but that can be said of basically every piece of art ever made. But that's also what makes art great. Somehow people find time and energy to create meaning and tell stories and relate to others through, in this case, the intentional organization of sound. All I'm saying is, to determine what is necessary in art, I think that's missing the point. Art can be anything. Have fun with it. Be yourself. Well, I believe in order to engage or criticize something properly, you should meet it where it's at to the best of your ability. For example, I saw complaints about his rendition of Bridge Over Troubled Water with John Legend, Tori Kelly, and Yeba. People saying that it was too much. Too much showing off, too much riffing, not enough of the intimate power of the Simon and Garfunkel original. But maybe, maybe that's the point? You get three ridiculously good singers on a track, you'd want to show them off. The point of this rendition, in my opinion, is to demonstrate the tremendous vocal dexterity of the lead vocalists, as well as Jacob's firm handle on choral voice leading. That's where the emotion lives for me. And if you don't want the thing that Jacob is giving you, that's fine, but that is the thing he's giving you. It's not fair to take Jacob's thing and miscategorize it by putting it up against different things that give you different emotions or different value propositions. It's a distinction that matters. Are you criticizing something or are you just asking for a different thing. Both are valid, but not when they're conflated. It's not like Bridge Over Troubled Water isn't one of the most covered folk songs in history. You can easily find a version of it that gives you the thing that you want. Let me put it like this. When you're at a subway and you order a particular kind of sandwich and you see the sandwich being made in front of you and you pay for the sandwich and you bite into the sandwich, you don't get to go. This does not succeed as beef fried rice.
Jacob makes generic Disney music. I'm not going to yell too much about why that's not accurate. This point seems to directly contradict the first one. Like, I don't know what Disney musicals are randomly throwing in gent breakdowns. Did Home on the Range do that? I haven't seen it in a while. Or maybe this complaint is about the more traditional songs by Jacob. Stuff like Little Blue or Never Gonna Be Alone off Volume 4. Conventional love songs. I suppose they're similar to Disney musicals in that Disney musicals also have love songs, but that's such a big generalization. Hey, check out my favorite Disney musical song, Girlfriend in a Coma. Also, let's be real here. If you're using the Disney complaint to call Jacob annoying, at least call him the right kind of annoying. He's not Disney musical annoying. He's music composition undergraduate annoying. He's not gonna write the metalcore songs for Home on the Range 2. He's gonna see a sign that says 3031 and then bust out a 3031 polyrhythm. Is that annoying? Depends on who you are. All I can say is that when Adam Neely did the same thing five years ago with 7-Eleven polyrhythms, everybody ate that shit up. Jacob's music is boring because he has perfect pitch. What do you guys think perfect pitch is? I'll tell you what it is. It's the ability to hear a note and identify it without any reference. That's all that it is. On its own, it's basically a party trick, like what Charlie Puth does. You could say that having perfect pitch reframes your relationship with music and how you look at notes and pitches, but that doesn't automatically make you a better musician or songwriter, and it certainly doesn't put you in some shadowy organization of perfect pitch havers. Jacob's music is poorly mixed. Not to be the guy who's like, oh, I have a degree in this, but I, I do genuinely have a degree in audio engineering. Um, this complaint annoys me, but not because it's wrong. I actually enjoy talking with people about how mixes make them feel, because I think it reveals what they value the most in a song on a pure sonic level. Do vocals matter? most? Does the beat matter most? Do you like mixes that authentically recreate real life spaces? Or do you want to hear something that could never exist in the real world? And if Jacob's music isn't mixed to your liking, then that's fine. However, if you just say that it's poorly mixed and you don't provide any examples or further details, that's what annoys me. Because then it's poorly mixed is just the buzzword you picked out of the music discourse hat. Jacob's lyrics aren't very good. Who cares? But really, this is, again, the question of what do you go to an artist for? What value are you getting from their work? I don't need to be blown away by Jacob's lyrical storytelling. That's not what I go to his music for. And I'm willing to bet that's not primarily what other listeners go to him for either. Instead, why don't you go to Sufjan Stevens? Or Phoebe Bridgers? Or Pitbull? Jacob's collaborators are incredibly random. Okay, but... That's fun! His Jesse albums are a chance for random musicians to come together in a low-stakes environment and work with someone who seems to be enjoyable to work with. It's like the Smash Brothers of music. Lizzie McAlpine raises the ceilings. John Legend gets lifted. Michael McDonald takes it to the streets. In other words, it's gorillas if Damon Albarn went to the Royal Academy. Jacob's Crocs are too loud. Now, this is a good point. Jacob has wild taste in footwear. But why am I doing this in the first place? Why do I feel the need to defend a man whom I've never met and whose music I usually just like? Well, first off, stating that opinion, that I don't always love Jacob's music, means that I now have to share oxygen with people like this, and I don't want to do that. I very much hope we get back to a point of equilibrium with this discourse very soon. Second, while he's not a huge celebrity or an outright pop star, I think his work says a lot about us as people in 2024. On a pure music level, Jacob could end up being a defining artist of this decade. Shoot, I'm spoiling the video! Okay, maybe defining is the wrong term. Perhaps he represents this decade. You say he makes hyperactive music that can't stick to one consistent thought? Does that not sync up with a generation largely stereotyped by ADHD and constant social media, who, according to stereotypes, can't consume visual media unless it's paired with subway surfers? I said in a video a while back that the music we don't like can often reflect the parts of ourselves or our world that we don't like. And I think Jacob is a good current example of that, even though he's not making the world a worse place by any means. Third and last, I admit that I think Jacob and I 
are pretty similar. We both have backgrounds in music. We're both 29. We both developed platforms on YouTube. We both got our starts in acting by playing Tiny Tim in productions of A Christmas Carol. We both own U-Bases, and we both enjoy the posts of Instagram meme page, The Surreal Bank. Despite his insane technical knowledge of music, I, as a regular dude, see a lot of myself in this guy. Which leads me to a question I'd like you to consider. What if Jacob is just a dude? You know, just a guy. A guy who makes music that is informed by his background and his interests, who wishes to share it with those who are receptive to it. He's not modern music's devil, but he's also not its angle. He's just a guy. I think he'd like to be seen in that way. I think it's a label that people, that's quite a tidy way of people understanding you. It's, in a sense, it's actually, it's quite an impersonal thing to tell someone. Like, oh my God, you're such a genius. That, like, there's no bridge there. You can't meet the person if they're a genius. It's like, it's like kicking them up into the sky and be like, you can just be up there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here. But it's, it's, it's far harder to meet someone where they are and say, you are a flawed human being, just like me. <laughs> and you also have this big world of yours, and I respect that. So what do you think of Jacob Collier? Do you like his music? Do you not care for it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, as long as they don't look like this.